Hi, hello everybody. Jared Gingler here with another piece of content for the YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be focusing on sales again, but most uh, importantly, why sales, what makes someone a top performer, and what you can do to become a trusted advisor to your customers. So by way of introduction for the group, my name is Jared Gengler. I've been in sales for 11 years, currently a global account executive at Sobos here for the past uh, two and a half years now. Um, always been in the technology space and love uh, what I do. Hi, Gene Richmeyer, Vice President of Business Development. Been in the financial services sector for a little over 10 years. Then Ty Olson, Director of Sales, been in the tech space for the last 10 years from roles in leadership to account management and to new business. Great. So I think we're going to put a stake in the ground here today and say that we've got a lot of experience on the line, you know, 30 plus years between the three of us. Um, my goal today is to paint a picture as to a few takeaways, a few takeaways that somebody looking to get into sales, you know, transition from one role to the next, or, you know, just learn more about what the profession looks like, um, have some takeaways for, for that individual. Um, so first thing first, why sales? Uh, for me, I kind of fell into the, the profession. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was in business school and didn't really know that this was a career path. And uh, I got a job in college as a cold caller, um, cut my teeth, learned how to do things, ended up as a, in an uh, inside sales role uh, out of college, actually worked with Kyle for a number of years and learned how to progress. Um, in sales, you learn a lot quickly because you have to be able to be adaptable and be an integral part of the process of selling. You know, you're, you're there for a company th from the get-go to completion of the sale and you learn a lot in the process. And after having hundreds of you know, opportunities closed in the last 10 years, I've learned a lot. So that's my perspective. Yeah, you know, for me, you know, business development and relationship management, really what's gotten me into it, what I've enjoyed about it is, A, I enjoy the people. I love working with people and I love to help. So in this profession, if done right, right, you're really helping. You're making a big difference in the communities you serve. Uh, for me, why sales is you know, in a world where technology continues to take over and even in education where people aren't taught this lost art, it lets you focus on how do you have a conversation? How do you build communication? And how do you listen? And all those things are skill sets that I feel sales can go and help you with lifelong skill sets that will help in your relationship with friends, your spouses, your loved ones. And it's just gonna be something that you'll never, never, ever regret doing. They say a lot of times for communication that, you know, a lot of problems come from lack of it, mm -hmm. right? And even things, you know, around communication where, how do I say it? What do I say? Like, am I saying the right thing? And even on this podcast right now, we think about, are we saying the right thing? And so, you know, am I enunciating clearly? Am I doing this? And I just feel that if you're able to go and have these types of skill sets, it's just so important in all of our relationships that we have, where poor communication is a crux of a lot of problems. Great communication helps solve that. Definitely. And I think too, for, from my perspective, having you know been in sales for a while, you know, it teaches you how to trust yourself and know that what you're bringing to the table for a customer, what you're advising them on is going to truly make a difference in what their day to day looks like. So um, I've learned, you know, a lot by kind of cutting my teeth and, and falling down and getting back up and trying it all over again. So it's definitely a, uh, like Kyle mentioned, kind of a lost art and you can only really learn how to sell by you know, having the repetitions and giving it a shot. So I guess next thing we wanted to, to cover is what makes a top performer. And I'm gonna lean on you, Kyle, given the fact that you are uh, in the managerial realm and you, know, you deal with a lot of individual contributors that you kind of see their, from things from, their, from that perspective. Yeah. And for me, when I think about who is a top performer and what, what traits and attributes and characteristics do they have that just seem to shine really bright, and the number one thing that I look for is 
their ability to overcome adversity. Because no matter what in sales, right, whether it's conversations that you're having, the job's hard. Like, you know, a lot of people tell you no, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to have these conversations, and they treat you differently. And even if you're doing your job really well, you know, all of a sudden next year the target changes. And so you have to overcome that hurdle again. And so ultimately there's a lot of times that those that can go and weather the storm and overcome that adversity are really going to be the most successful. And on top of that, I feel anyone that has the art of empathy and listening is going to be miles ahead. If you're able to go and put yourself in someone else's shoes to really go and understand and feel their problems and how that makes them feel, you're able to go and relate that back and make sure that they're a person and not just a sales target for you. And so those are things that in my perspective, if you can go and say, hey, if I have the will to continue, I have the drive, and I'm able to go and fully shut my mind off and listen to somebody else, you're gonna be wildly successful. I like what you said there about putting yourself in someone else's shoes. I think that's that's a key component to be able to kind of detach yourself from the outcome of, of the deal itself and really just see things from the perspective of the client mm -hmm. and just have have that intention of just wanting to help and understand what's going on at more of a deeper level than the than the problem than the initial problem that you're trying to solve. And I think that kind of dovetails right into the last key topic of today's call is uh, what makes a trusted advisor. I think being a trusted advisor, you almost you have to be viewed as an expert in your craft, right? You want for someone to, to trust your opinion or have respect for your opinion, you need to be respected. And in order to do that, you need to be viewed as an expert, right? Just like you know, I've done the doctor analogy before, right? But we we put a lot of faith right out the gate with. Or medical professionals because because of they're, they're viewed as an expert and I think if you have if the client views you that way because you're proven you know it's not just given you, you have proven with success you've had success you have with the, within your company or outside your company I think helps build that brand and helps helps build the trust it helps lead inwards to that and basically creating a collaboration when you're working with the customer definitely and going back to trust and how you get there and the ways to do it, you know, a lot of times, like when you were talking about outcome-based thinkings and outcome-based processes, right, you know, we want to go and be prepared for our customers. I want to be prepared for the people that I help. And ultimately that does some research, right? And so when we do that, it's how do we make sure that we aren't weaponizing the research that we do because we're focused on how do we get the sale? That means like when we're having conversations with people, like how do we make sure that we're not weaponizing their responses and that we're just doing it to go and say, okay, like I need to learn what you're going through. I need to do, I need to go and know those things so that I actually can go and help you out. And so I think, you know, if you just focus on less of the outcome and more about the journey, more about the moment, more about the learning, it's gonna go do wonders for your career and it will naturally just unfold. I think that boils down to, I think I, I, I brought this up earlier, but, it's, but not weaponizing comes down to intention. What are your intentions? Are your intentions to help? Well, if your intentions to help, it's gonna be very hard to weaponize something because you're on their side. You're creating a collaboration and an alliance with whoever you're working with. Definitely. I, I think of it as you're part of their team, really. Mm -hmm. So if you can you know, switch the roles a little bit and not consider yourself as a part of the company that is you know, positioning the solution as a, somebody that is partnering with that, comp that you know, client, to give them the best possible outcome for their needs, you know, and the desires of their company to be, you know, uh, successful as well. Mm -hmm. We've all talked a lot about help, and it's interesting because every conversation I go into, instead of focusing on like, well, what's the next step or where's the next place or like, what do we need to work on? The only thing I have going on in my mind is how do I help? And I verbalize that. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I'm here for you. I want to listen and learn what you need help with. Or is there anything that you want to share to me that you'd like help with? Yep. And that's the only target that I keep telling myself over and over again in my mind is that, is there something I can do? And if I can't do it, is there someone that I can go and show them that can help them with that? Yep. Yeah, and that's, you know, networking is, that's why networking is so important in my opinion. I think the ability to have, have access to experts in your industry, your field, I think it's a, it's a differentiator between you and people in your same, in your same job, in your same role, within your company or outside your company. 
who you know who can make a difference for your client. And if you know how to make a difference for your client and be able to give them your connections, you become that, in my opinion, a true trusted advisor. Because you're not just, it's not just you and your company, it's about, it's about Gene Richmeyer, you know. It's about, it's about what we're doing for them, what, what Gene's been able to help me with. Um, and again, it gets back to, to being on that, basically being on the client's barbecue list. Yep, definitely. We well, covered a few things on today's um, conversation, podcast, call, channel, whatever you want to call it, and want to double back on what the focus was. So we talked about you know, what is uh, a reason for us to be in sales, what is the takeaway of why we're in sales, and what makes it a, a worthwhile profession to pursue. Um, Kyle kind of focused in on, you know, from his perspective, what is a top performer? Takeaways were you, know, you need to be able to overcome adversity. Uh, I think that's tried and true. Like, you know, you're not going to be successful if you're not able to, to take take that hurdle, get over it, and make the next call. Um, and then we touched on, you know, being a trusted advisor, a couple different points as to what can make that a possibility and what can make you a successful um, person in the, in the world of sales um, and becoming that, uh, that individual. So thanks, everybody, for listening today, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, thanks Jared. Thanks, everybody. Let's see if it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it does it. Oh, good job, Parker. You did good. You did. <laughs> Sounded good. <laughs>